celebrate a very special event, Artemis Day. It's a privilege to be leading this unique facility at such an important time in NASA's future. Our NASA's 13th Administrator, Jim Bridenstine. Course stage complete. And I know there's a lot of people here that I need to thank, not the least of which are the men and women who work day in and day out to get us to this point, which I know has not been easy, but we are there. So many people that are here, uh, staffers for members of Congress and senators, key appropriators, key authorizers, thank you for being here on this very important day when we get to announce core stage complete for, in fact, the SLS rocket, the first step towards achieving Artemis One, where we get to send the first woman and the next man to the moon. And by, by the way, that's Artemis Three, but Artemis One is the first step to achieving that. So it's great to be here today. This time when we go to the moon, we're gonna go with international partners and we're gonna go with commercial partners. So we're gonna get there. We're gonna learn how to use that capability to live and work on another world for long periods of time. And we're gonna take that knowledge to Mars. So of course we have to be able to launch humans. The SLS rocket and the Orion crew capsule and the European service module are qualified. From day one, qualified. Every component, every subcomponent tested and retested to be qualified to launch humans. Uh, know this, um, the efficiencies that we're seeing today because this one is now complete are amazing. We're seeing in some cases, depending on the different components and parts, we're seeing 25, 40% efficiencies. We are making significant progress towards achieving that Artemis III mission and getting our first woman and next man to the South Pole of the Moon. Thank you all so much for all the hard work that you and this facility here at Mishu, America's rocket factory, thank you so much for your hard work. Space.com, can you talk about to launch each SLS rock, maybe why this has been a number that is seemingly up for debate still? Well, it's really quite simple. <laughs> if you buy one SLS rocket, the price is really high. If you buy two, the price comes down significantly. If you buy three, it keeps going down. So what we're doing is we're looking at what, what are the needs that we have over the coming decades and how many SLS rockets do we need to buy? The more we buy, the more the cost per unit comes down. And that's just a matter of economies of scale, and it's true whether you're buying, buying fighter aircraft or you're buying automobiles. Um, the, the, the upfront cost, the development cost, uh, the overhead is the biggest part of any kind of development project. And if you look at any development project, it follows a traditional bell curve. And I go back to Apollo, it was a bell curve. Well, the challenge that we have as an agency right now is that our budgets are flat. We don't get bell curve budgets, we get flat budgets. So we have to figure out how do we take all of that bell curve money and spread it over so many years. And that, by the way, for our representative that's here, that actually costs the government more money over time rather than the traditional development cost. Uh, we, 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 we tested a hydrogen tank to failure. Was it hydrogen or oxygen? Hydrogen. The hydrogen tank that was tested to failure uh, met 260% of the, of, the, of, the, of the load. That is, that is really, really good. We're very pleased with that. Um, and just so everybody knows, I want to get the video of that and I'm going to tweet it out. Uh, I think it's really cool. People need to see it. And just so everybody knows, uh, we test things to destroy them so that, they're, so that we're safe. People are like, oh, don't tweet that out because we don't want to see some, people don't want to see something blowing up. I'm like, no, people want to see things blowing up. That's what they want to see. It just so happens that in this case, it blew up at 260% of the load, which is a good thing. The, the SLS core stage complete. That's a beautiful, beautiful sign. Just so you know, a year ago, uh, I, was, I was getting called to testify on the Hill because this, this vehicle was having all kinds of problems and delays and challenges. And this facility here at Michoud and our contractor Boeing did everything they could to make sure that we could achieve this by the end of this year. That was a challenge I gave them. It's a challenge they delivered on and we're grateful for it. We have made significant strides. It is also true that SLS 2 for Artemis 2 is already under development in this very facility. And of course, as soon as this one moves out of the facility, we need to get ready as soon as possible for SLS 3. 
By the way, the only way this is happening today is because we've got the SLS rocket complete. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of the hard work. Thank you so much for all of the hard work to get us to this point, but let's remember this is just the beginning. We are the Artemis generation. We need to name it. We need to claim it. We need to move forward with it. And we need to make sure that everybody is talking about the fact that this time when we go to the moon, we're going to go to stay with a purpose of learning how to live and work on another world so that we can take that knowledge and information to Mars. By the end of the year, we're going to be moving it out of the Mishu assembly facility. We're going to take it to the Stennis Space Center. We're going to do a green run test. We're going to prove its capability. We're going to get it to the Cape. And we're going to be ready to launch American astronauts to the moon again and getting our first woman and next man to the South Pole of the Moon in 2024. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Artemis Day.